Maester Marwyn and Barbary Dustin accuse the Maesters of the Citadel of some pretty big crimes. Marwyn says, Who do you think killed the dragons the last time around? Gallant dragon slayers armed with swords? The world the Citadel is building has no place in it for sorcery or prophecy or glass candles, much less for dragons. Since almost all of the dragons died in the Dance of the Dragons, Maester Marwyn is essentially accusing the Maesters of starting that war. Lady Dustin's accusation is similar, but instead of dragons, it's for Targaryens. Wally's flowers. Once he forged his chain, his secret father and his friends wasted no time dispatching him to Winterfell to fill Lord Rickard's ears with poisoned words as sweet as honey. The Tully marriage was his notion. Never doubt it. So Lady Dustin is claiming that the Stark-Tully alliance was the Maester's idea. And if all of Rickard Stark's southern ambitions were the Maester's idea, then that means the Stark Tully Baratheon Aaron alliance was their idea as well. Is Lady Dustin saying that the Maesters caused Robert's rebellion? It would be a sinister plan. Step one, eliminate the dragons. Step two, eliminate the Targaryens. Well, let's search our history to see if these accusations are true. The problem is, history is written by the Maesters. The history of the Dance of the Dragons mostly comes from two sources, the Rogue Prince and the Princess and the Queen, both written by Archmaester Gildane. Gildane, though, is not even the primary source. He's basing his history off of Septon Eustace, other maesters, and a fool named Mushroom. So, first things first, is Archmaester Gildane biased? Well, by his own admission, Gildane calls Mushroom his worst source. Mushroom is often used as a source for events he was clearly not at, and Mushroom's stories in general are just ridiculous. For example, Mushroom claims that Prince Damon gave his niece blowjob lessons and used Mushroom as a subject. Now, I understand that only a few of you out there have read The Rogue Prince, but essential to the story is the rivalry between Otto Hightower and Daemon Targaryen. How did this rivalry start? Well, this is what Gildane says. Though the origins of their enmity are much disputed, all men agree that Sir Otto Hightower, the king's hand, took a great mislike to the king's brother. The king's fool Mushroom asserts that the quarrel began when Prince Damon deflowered Sir Otto's young daughter Alicent, the future queen. But this scurrilous tale is unsupported by any other source. So Gildane repeats a story that he doesn't think is true from a bad source and then doesn't give us any alternative explanation? Archmaester Gildane, you are a shitty, shitty historian. But now that we know that Gildane is biased, or at least biased against Damon Targaryen, let's try to reconstruct the events of the Dance of the Dragons. Our story really begins about 90 years after Aegon's conquest with the wise King Jaehaerys and the good Queen Alysanne. Now they had several children, but two are important, Aemon and Balon. Now Aemon dies in the year 92, and so Rhaenys is supposed to be the heir. Yet weirdly, Jaehaerys chooses Balon as his heir over Rhaenys. Targaryen's succession was supposed to be equal between men and women, and yet Gildane is silent on the issue. No one has anything bad to say about Rhaenys, so it may be that Jaehaerys had a problem with Rhaenys' husband, Corlys Velaryon. But what could drive a wedge between the king and House Velaryon? Well, the only issue that I can think of that's controversial was Alysanne's banning of the First Knight. Targaryens and Velaryons continued to practice it in the Narrow Sea, despite Alysanne's ban. Now, a legitimized bastard named Adam Velaryon became heir to Driftmark, and he was produced from a First Knight so it seems that either Corlys or a close relative was still practicing it. Whatever the cause of the rift, Maester Gildane is silent on it. Now around the year 101, both Balon and Alysanne die. Succession is once again an issue, and according to Gildane, Jaehaerys chooses Viserys over Rhaenys as his successor. But weirdly, a council is also called and comes to the same conclusion, Viserys over Rhaenys. If Jaehaerys had already chosen a successor, what's the point of the council? And who would call a council together? Jaehaerys certainly wouldn't call a council to undermine his own decision. Now Gildane says that Jaehaerys' wits were leaving him, so perhaps his choices can't be trusted. But here's the thing, Jaehaerys' son Balon was both his heir and his hand. So when Balon died, Jaehaerys had to choose a new hand and a new heir at the same time. Why allow Jaehaerys to pick Otto Hightower as hand, but not allow him to pick an heir? The whole situation seems very fishy with regard to choosing an heir. Let's keep in mind that it's Alysanne that had a problem with House Velaryon and not Jaehaerys. 
With Alisane dead, Jaehaerys is free to pick Rhaenys as his successor to heal the rift between the Targaryens and the Velaryons. But instead, House Velaryon is dissed again. At best, Gildane is hiding some significant events from history. At worst, he's covering up a massive conspiracy. Hightower enters the scene in the year 101 and instantly is running the country. One would think that the shift of power away from House Velaryon towards House Hightower would warrant an explanation. Whatever the case, in the year 103, Jaehaerys dies and Viserys becomes ruler of the realm. Viserys is said to be a pushover, so Otto Hightower is still running the show. Now in the year 103, Viserys' brother, Daemon Targaryen, also returns to King's Landing to help him rule. Now let's remember that in the past two years, his father Balon, his grandmother Alysanne, and his grandfather Jaehaerys have all died. Otto Hightower is now ruling the country instead of his pushover brother, Viserys. And considering that Viserys only has a daughter at this point, recent precedent with regard to succession would make Daemon the heir to the Iron Throne. Daemon's return to King's Landing makes perfect sense politically and perfect sense as a brother, but that's not what Archmaester Gildane writes. He writes that Daemon returned to King's Landing because he didn't like his wife. He writes that Daemon was ambitious and dangerous. However, he seems to give Otto Hightower a pass. So why does Gildane have such good feelings towards House Hightower and not Daemon? Well, House Hightower was instrumental in the founding of the Citadel. They've also been big patrons of the Faith of the Seven. Meanwhile, Otto Hightower claims Daemon would be like Magor the Cruel, a king famous for destroying the Faith Militant and killing three Grand Maesters. Hightower was very much against Daemon rising to the throne and was very much against him having any power in general. Hightower convinced Viserys to remove Daemon from his job as Master of Coin and then as Master of Law. Now, if all of this looks like a Hightower takeover with the Citadel complicit, it gets worse. A man named Lionel Strong, who studied at the Citadel and earned six links of a maester's chain, becomes master of law. Viserys' wife then dies in childbirth, and his son lasts one day. This birth would have been overseen by Grand Maester Runketer. Lionel Strong's son, Harwin, then spreads a rumor that Daemon laughed at the death of Viserys' son. This creates a rift between Viserys and Daemon, and Daemon leaves King's Landing. Runketer then suggests that Viserys remarry. And of all the women to choose, Viserys picks Alicent Hightower, daughter of Otto Hightower. Alicent is perhaps the worst person to choose in the world, as her father is Hand. Other lords would see this as an abuse of power on the Hightower's part. So how on earth did Viserys make such a boneheaded decision? Well, Gildane's writings become quite deceptive at this moment. He claims that Viserys, despite being a pushover, made this decision all by himself. But he has discussions with his advisors about this, so clearly it was not all by himself. Gildane also claims that Runketer put forward a suitable option, a Valarian girl. By marrying a Valarian girl, Viserys could heal the rift between House Valarian and House Targaryen. Of course, there's one big problem. The girl is 12. Even by ice and fire standards, that's pretty young. So Runketer didn't put forward a suitable option. So we can piece together what probably happened. Otto Hightower put forward his daughter, and then Runketer put forward the Valarian girl. Viserys made his choice all by himself between two girls, one that's 18 and another that's 12. And the Maesters get to claim that they tried to encourage peace when in fact they encouraged war. House Valarian was slighted again and didn't attend the marriage between Viserys and Alicent. Now Otto Hightower continues his attempt at a takeover by trying to get Viserys to switch his heir. Viserys and his first wife, Emma Arryn, had Rhaenyra, and Viserys had named her heir to the Iron Throne. Otto Hightower tried to get the heir switched to his grandson, Aegon. In the year 109, Viserys has enough of Otto Hightower's harassment, so he kicks him out his hand, but he replaces him with Lionel Strong, so not much has really changed. But if Viserys won't switch his heir, something needs to be done about Rhaenyra. And so Grandmaster Melos advocates marrying her to a Valarian. Again, Gildane is making it look like the Maesters are a force for peace. But here's the problem. The Valarian that Melos recommends is clearly gay. Even if Rhaenyra is able to produce children with her gay husband, she's forced to seek romantic companionship somewhere else, which means everyone will question the children's paternity. If this was Grand Maester Melos' plan, it works pretty well, as Rhaenyra's children are constantly being accused of being bastards and Gildane spends an inordinate amount of time mentioning it in his histories. So we see that those that eventually form the Black Faction in the Dance of the Dragons 
are those that have been screwed with regard to succession. Those that are treated quite well in the histories and that have connection to the citadel form the green faction. And we see the maesters are greatly influencing Targaryen succession while being dishonest about the history of the Dance of the Dragons. And this maester meddling only increases with time. We'll talk about that and the Dance of the Dragons in part two.